In this video, we're going to talk about 5 advanced level Ryobi power tools. And these are the 5 advanced Ryobi power tools. If you're a homeowner and you want to repair your house, these are the must-have Ryobi power tools that is going to ease your repair life. In order to use these power tools, you must have a general knowledge on how to repair the house. <laughs> But if you're new to this, I'm also going to demonstrate each one of these tools on how you would use them. Each of these here is going to set you back about $100. But if you go to a second hand store, you can easily save 50% on your purchase. But before you buy it, make sure you understand how to use them and also make sure they work if you buy at the second hand store. First, you have this cordless 10 ounce caulking gun. This is a very easy to use caulking tool with a push button right here it has six speed mode and when you finish using a single cock you can pull this back and take out the old one this tool doesn't really use a lot of battery you can easily use over 100 cock with one single charge on the battery it has this anti-dripping technology every time you finish using a line you release it and it's going to kick back it will release the pressure that is pushing the cock there's also this little lock button allows you to lock it so you don't accidentally use the gun. And here is a demonstration on how I use this tool. Uh, as you can see on the outside, there is some cracks. We're going to patch everything. Make sure it works. You're going to want to get yourself the cock ready. If you have a brand new one, just grab yourself a pair of scissors. You know, cut it so the top comes out and you have an opening. It has this pin. Punch a few holes, punch it multiple times, your cock is ready to go. Clean the pin. To load it up is pretty easy. Put the bottom first, it will just slide in. So press. And it's not being pushed to the bottom yet because like this is still loose. So whenever it starts like going forward like this, it has hit the bottom. I need to go from here down. So let's use it. So six is quite fast. I'll put it on number three. So the tool is pretty nice because like all you need to do is just press the button here. If you're using like the manual one, you know, like keep pressing it so you cannot like make like a good line. But with this, you can do your work a lot faster. This gap is done. I'm going to do the rest of the house and uh, I will see you back at the studio. Second, we have this 5 inch random orbit sander. This is a pretty cool unit. This doesn't just do the spinning, it also vibrates left to right, and sometimes it spins and sometimes it doesn't. So that is why it is called a random sander. There is an on and off button here, and even though if you accidentally put your finger here or put your hand here, it doesn't really stretch you up because it only starting to work when you pressure it on something. And also, it has this little container here allowing all the dust together here. So I have a perfect example. So I'm gonna be using the sander to send this door the door here on the both sides it has a really rough finish on the side i'll sand the surface to make it smooth Oof, all right. I can tell that it's already a lot better. So I have the other side, so let's go ahead and flip this over. Okay, same thing on the other side. Oh my God, it's like very rough. All right, so now all the dust is inside here. All right, now that the door is done, back to the... Next, I have this 18 volt fast charger for six batteries. This charger pretty much saved my life because when I was renovating a house, I needed to make sure I have enough batteries for all the tools. Because it wasn't just me, I had to also provide my workers some tools. Having enough battery constantly charging is critical on making sure the project is done on time. This fast charger allows your battery to be charged fully 30% faster. This is charging one by one, and there are indicators on the top that tells you which one is charging, which one is ready, and which one is still waiting to be charged. By the way, there's also a USB charger right here. So I also have a demonstration for you. This is our charger and we have exactly six batteries. So let's plug this in and we're going to see what happened to the unit.
So it starts off with checking all the light, saying that it is on. So now we're gonna plug in the batteries. So this one is telling us that, okay, the battery was detected and now it is charging. And uh, when I plug the second one, this one it says, okay, I detect a battery, uh, but this one is not being charged. So this one takes the priority, this one is being charged, and then we'll, we'll go to the next one. So just now what happened is, this one is fully charged, and now it is going charging the next one. So let's continue to plug. You can plug all the batteries. So let me turn this around. <clears throat> Right here, it is what it is telling you. The battery is waiting, so the light is red. When it is blinking red, the battery is in a high temperature. When the red and the green light both flashing at the same time constantly, the battery is no good. When it is blinking, the battery is low and it's doing a fast charging. When the green light is like slowly glowing, it means it is almost at the full capacity. And whenever it is solid green, the battery is fully charged, ready to go. I like this unit and it's because I can keep on using the battery while other batteries are being charged. I think this is a pretty good unit. And with that being said, Next, we have this Ryobi 18 volt multi-tool. This tool allows you to cut something in a straight line. This blade here, it is vibrating left to right. I mostly use this to cut out drywall, like adding an electrical box. Some of the blades is for some materials. For this one, it is for wood, plastic, and drywall. If you're cutting metal, you have to change out this blade. You have a hexagon tool underneath. You put your hexagon key here, twist it, and loosen it enough to take the blade out. So here is how you put it back. And also there's like a speed dial here. If you just use zero, and when you press the button, there's an LED in the front to help you see the area. And then you can turn it to a speed between 1 and 6. It will start vibrating in the speed that you set to. And also the LED turns on. There's also this lock right here. Whenever you don't want to press this button, you just want to like, like aim it like this. You can press the button and then press this lock button and your trigger button is locked. So you can easily try to reach further. And here's my demonstration. So a good example will be adding an electrical box on the drywall. So this is an electrical mounting bracket that has like four holes. We're going to be marking down the four points. All right, we're going to change it to like the faster speed. Alright, this tool is pretty fast, so go fast. Alright, so now we have our dryer cut out. A very, a very simple work. Alright, I mean, using your drill tool. Fix it. Alright, now the top side is fixed, the bottom side is not. Alright, so here is your electrical bracket. Done. If you want cable pass through here, you have a plate to go on top and your cable can pass through. And lastly, we have this cordless 5.5 inch circular saw. You're going to want this if you want to cut wood. When I was doing construction, I would use this a lot to cut the subfloor, some 2x4 wood, and even metal nails that I encounter sometimes. This tool is using a 5.5 inch blade. You can easily change it. You have this hexagon key on the back. Take it out. Right here is your screw that is holding it. Before you can twist the screw, there's a button right here that you need to press. So keep holding the button while you turn the key and it's going to push in. Now the blade is locked. To loosen it, you want to turn it clockwise. And here it is how you change the blade. To tighten it, you want to turn it counterclockwise. And this is how you change the blade on this circular saw. To use it, there's a lock button here. This is a trigger button, but you cannot use it. You have to press the safety lock here, then use it. And make sure you have it spinning first before having it touch any surface because it needs momentum to start spinning in order to cut something. If you accidentally push it too forward that it touches the material before it can actually spin, it will just stop because it doesn't have enough force to spin. Also, there's a ruler right here. It start with a negative one inch, zero, one, two, three, four inch. So this whole thing is like five inches. So where is this zero here? It is pretty much telling you, oh, 
where it is actually cutting. This one says 45, is whenever you have this circular saw in an angle. To change the angle of it, there's a screw right here, loosen it, then you can change this plate here to maximum 45 degrees. You want to be using this 45 zero point for cutting because that is the line that you'll be cutting. Usually we just want to have it cut 90 degree. So put it on zero. You're gonna adjust the height on how much this circular saw cut. So let's say you wanna cut out part of the subfloor. You don't wanna use the whole one and a half inch here to cut your subfloor because you may actually cut the structure of the building. You can change the height by releasing this screw here and this plate. It's something you can adjust. As you can see here, the higher it gets, the less play you get to use. Adjust properly, lock it again, twist it, now this is fixed, and now you can cut whatever things you want to cut with this height. So here's a quick demonstration on how I cut this 2x4 here, and uh, you want to cut out part of it off. I want to cut out like 3 inches. I want 21. So you get your marker, so do 21. One more time on the bottom, 21. Now we need to draw a line. And now it's time to cut it. So make sure your blade is all the way down and there's nothing underneath to cut through. Whenever it's done to cut, this guard is going to open up to cut the wood. So, but when you start, you can also pull it up, starting to cut and push forward. Press the button here, hold it, and then you have your trigger button on the bottom. So ready? And that is how you cut a piece of 2x4. So these are the five advanced level power tools from Ryobi that an advanced homeowner should have. I'm going to leave all the links down below so you can go check them out. And if you want to save some money, just go on Facebook Marketplace. You should be able to find some used tool store around your area. Hit the like button right here. Comment right here if you want me to review something next. Hit the subscribe button right here if you want to see my face again. And I'll see you in the next video. Shh.